Hey everyone, Andrew here. I wanted to show you how I manage multiple sites when I use Docker. Everything in this video will be done in my local environment, but you should also be able to follow the same steps for production servers as well. All right, I have this application here and it has a separate backend and front end. The front end is powered by JavaScript and the back end by PHP. And if I open up the Docker Compose file for it, each of those sections is served as a separate service. So the app is the front end portion of it and it's served on the 8081 port, where the API is the backend portion served on the 8082 port. This is currently up and running in Docker, and if I go to the browser, we can see localhost 8081 is displaying the JavaScript application, and localhost 8082 is displaying the PHP application, which will be the backend API. Now in this application, both of these are expected to work in tandem together. But besides just being annoying, having to tack on the port numbers in the URL, there's a problem, and that is that browsers treat URLs with different ports as completely separate domains, which can come with their own set of problems, especially if you use cookies or anything like that for authentication. Ideally, I'd like them all to be on the same domain, and that's where traffic comes in. Traffic is a HTTP reverse proxy and load balancer application built in Go that's readily used in containerized environments, so it's perfect for our use case. Let's get started and I'll crack open my Docker Compose file again. And at the bottom here, we're going to add in a new service. We'll call it traffic. And it will use an image, traffic, and the latest tag, which at the time of this recording is version 2.9. Next, we need to pass in two arguments with the command attribute. API.insecure is true, which allows us to use it without providing SSL certificates and providers.docker, which specifies what container platform we're using. It has two ports that we can expose, one at 80, which we will map to 80. That's where the actual web traffic from our browser is going. And then there's another at 8080, which we will also map to 8080 locally. And that's a handy little dashboard view that I'll show you later on. Finally, we need to mount our Docker socket to it using a volume var run docker.sock to the same directory and location, var run docker.sock. Now, the other services that will be using this should depend on this new container. So we'll add that to their respective lists. So scrolling up, API now depends on MySQL, but it should also depend on traffic. And so should the app service. So now as both of these spin up, traffic will be the first one to be provisioned. So now we can go ahead and utilize these changes. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal and we're going to restart our containers, docker compose down and docker compose up D. All right, everything is started and we can run docker compose PS to make sure that everything is running and it is. And now let's go back to the browser real quick and we can see that everything is still running as expected in its ports. But what happens if we just go to localhost and we get a 404 page not found? That's good because that means that the traffic container is running and getting traffic to it, but we don't have anything called host rules set up for this yet. And those are the domains that are used in routing traffic from the browser to one of the services listed in our Docker Compose file. If we head over to the 8080 port, we can see this cool little dashboard view for us that Traffic provides. If we check out the HTTP tab, we can see our two services here under API Full Stack App and App Full Stack App. But we can't actually visit these in this state because the host name is not exactly a fully qualified domain name. We can fix this though. Let's go back to our Docker Compose file. And under each of the two containers running our app services, we need to create a labels section. In it, we just need a single label, and that's a string that starts with traffic dot HTTP dot routers, and then a dot followed by the service name of the container we're currently in. For us, that is app. So app, and then dot rule equals host, and then in parentheses, we provide the host name for it that we want to use. Let's just use app dot localhost. Since anything that ends in localhost is automatically routed to the localhost 80 port, this will make it easier for us. I don't need to add this to my Etsy host file. All right, and now we need another one for the API. So we'll just copy this section here 
and then in the API service, we'll change this from app.localhost to api.app.localhost. And we need to change the app service to API. Okay, let's save this and restart our containers. Docker Compose down and Docker Compose up D. Okay, now let's open up our browser. And if we refresh the traffic dashboard here, we can see that our hosts for our services have been updated to use api.app.localhost and app.localhost. And if we use those in the browser, we can see that we're getting routed exactly where we expected. So app.localhost is in our JavaScript application. while api.app.localhost navigates us to the PHP application. So no more juggling between ports, everything goes through port 80 and is routed to the particular service based on the domain that we use. Just as another example, let's say that we don't want to use a subdomain for the API and instead want it to be on part of the domain, like app.localhost slash API. Well, we can just make a simple change to the API's traffic label We'll wrap what we have here in parentheses first. And then we'll swap out the host here to mirror the app. So just app.localhost. And then we can tack on and path prefix and then provide it with a somewhat obvious path prefix. So like slash API. So that means that any traffic that goes to app.localhost slash API and any other route afterwards will be routed to this service here, whereas the main app.localhost will still be routed to this app here, as well as any other paths after it that are not API. And let's see this in action. I'll just restart my containers one more time. All right, and going back to the browser, we can see api.app.localhost does not resolve anymore. App.localhost still does. And if we go to slash API, It says 404 not found, but it's being routed through the PHP application. There's just no route available for slash API. But if I went ahead and added that in just for this example's sake, we can go to the backend application, routes API, and create a route get slash because it's already prefixed with API, and return a hello world. So now saving this and going back to the browser, we can see we're getting back hello world now from the PHP application at slash API. And of course, heading back to the traffic dashboard, we can see the changes reflected here. All right, I think that's it for this video. Traffic's pretty powerful, and it's a great addition to your orchestration tool belt, whether you use it locally or in production. We barely scratched the surface of the features it provides though. Here's a documentation site for it, and it's just chock full of different configurations and additions that you can add to your particular instance. Anyway, I just wanted to showcase a basic example of how I use it specifically to route traffic to a few separate services, especially when I'm working locally. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other web development topics, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments or on my Twitter linked below. Thanks for watching.